What's up, everybody? Joe White here, and this is my All Out, AEW All Out 2024 review. I'm not going to cover anything that was on the pre-show, because quite frankly, I don't care. Um, And I didn't watch it. So this pay-per-view for me, I'll I'll give you my overall thoughts here. The first part of this pay-per-view, I was like, good. Okay, we're doing good here. This was actually pretty decent. Nothing real, real big. It was just, you know, I'll be honest with you. A lot of this stuff was just, okay, it was there. It told a decent story, but it was, it was okay. Um, Nothing five stars or, or, you know, even four stars at the beginning of this. Um, So actually I wouldn't give four stars to anything on this pay-per-view. Well, maybe one match. Maybe one match. We'll get there. Starting it off, MJF defeated Daniel Garcia in 23 minutes and 40 seconds. I thought this was very good. They told a very good story. It's about three stars because to me it went on about maybe 10 minutes too long. Um, MJF's star is waning for me. They've not handled him real good since his return. I haven't liked, been, liked how he's been booked. I li- haven't really liked how he's performed. Since he's returned, so uh, it was it was, you know three stars. Um, the young bucks defeated the back Blackpool Combat Club. I did not even watch this match. I will tell you, I did like the finish of it. Two stars. Um, it's a young bucks match. What do you expect? The only match that I will give four stars to on this pay per view. Will Ospreay defeating Pac by pinfall. This match was freaking amazing. And they told a good story. Now, I will say, the video packages that they put on before each match didn't do a damn thing to really tell you what why these two were fighting. In any of the matches, they didn't tell you why anybody was fighting each other. It was just, here's what's going on from last week, and here's a bunch of clips of them beating the hell out of each other on, on the side. And uh, here we go. And it was just so, uh, WWE far far outperforms them when it comes to video packages and storytelling. Um, But Osprey, Pac, I will say four stars for that one. Um, They did tell a story in there. They were very, very good in there. And I love the finish. It was just really good. Um, Chris Statlander with Stokely Hathaway versus uh, or defeated Willow Nightingale by submission in a Chicago street fight. They went 15 minutes. Um, I I love both these women. I think they're awesome. You know, in their own right, they were awesome as a tag team. Um, I I give this match three and a half stars. It's a set, my second favorite match on the pay per view, and I thought they they beat that. I, I would could have gone without the light tubes. That's where I was like, oh, really? We're doing that? But that was nothing compared to what was to come later on. Uh, So, yeah, three and a half stars. These two really, really tore it up. They told a good story. I liked it. (sighs) Then in a match where I give at least two and a half stars, too, because it was just there. It was just there. It was just there. It was a spot fest. It, It just half of it just was meh. I mean, this was like meh. Kuzuchka Okada defeats Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, and take a shit. Don Callis on commentary. I will say the commentary for this whole pay-per-view sucked. I could not stand the commentary. At one point, I almost just muted the damn thing and watched it in silence. But, you know, this match right here, especially two stars, it's just so, this match was just there. You could have done without it. You take this match off the pay-per-view, this four-way off the pay-per-view, and you're really not missing anything. Speaking of something, uh, one star right here, I, and I hate saying this. Actually, I'll give it two stars because Hikaru Shida was awesome here. Mercedes Monet. The Mercedes Monet project has failed, and it's time Tony Khan sees that. The fact of the matter is he's paying her a ton of money to be there, and it's it's just stupid. This match, two stars. It was it was there. 
And I'm primarily giving it two stars because Harkaru Shida tried her best to carry Mercedes Monet. And even in the video package beforehand, Mercedes Monet just comes off as WWE light. There's nothing real original about her. There's nothing reinvented about her. This match, the match itself, you could tell Harkaru Shida was just carrying her the whole time. There were timing issues in this match. There were performance issues in this match. This match just, again, went on about maybe 10 minutes too long. You could have wrapped this up in five minutes. Bam, it would have been okay. Brian Danielson defeated Jack Perry, and um, I I liked it up until, you know, I give it three stars just because the closing, the match was okay. I'm a huge Danielson fan. To a certain point now, I'm even a bigger Jack Perry fan. Thank you, CM Punk, for making Jack Perry finally ditch the Jungle Boy gimmick. But anyway, um, if anything, Jack Perry has CM Punk to thank for the rest of his career. Just saying. I like this match right up until the closing angle. I like to actually, I'll take that back. I like the closing angle. You know, Christian's coming in, threatening to cash in his title shot that he's got. The Blackpool, Blackpool Combat Club backs them down. You think all's good in the neighborhood, and then bam, a European uppercut by Claudio. And then you, Danielson doesn't even sell it. That's what kills me. He's just had this grueling match. And oh, Claudio hits him with an uppercut out of just nowhere. And Danielson doesn't even really, he goes down. But he hits his knees and he just looks up at him with this stupid look on his face. And it's just not even a look of why would you do that? It's it's just a look. It's, it's I mean, it's just so stupid. And then Moxley with the plastic bag over Danielson's head. Danielson's not selling this at all. He keep He's keeping his eyes open. He's breathing in and out. You can see the plastic bag, you know, constricting and puffing, constricting and puffing the entire time. And his eyes are open. And you can tell he's getting air in. If you're going to do something like this, at least try to make it seem like you're really suffocating this guy. Like you're really putting this guy out. But no, they can't do that. They finally leave. They take the plastic bag off. He's breathing normally. And yet they still put, you know, they still put the oxygen on. They don't even bother. They don't even bother to stretcher him out. The fucking phony doctors just carry his ass out of there with the oxygen tank on his chest. This whole thing, the execution of it all, was just stupid. And Wheeler Yuta crying like a little bitch. Why not have Wheeler Yuta turn with them? It would add a whole other dimension to Wheeler Yuta's attitude, to Wheeler Yuta's career. But no, we got to have him being held back by Pac, crying like a little bitch. And it's just a whole execution of this. Brung the entire match down for me. I mean, you know, it was a solid three and a half stars, I think, before this thing. And it just brung it down to maybe three stars, if not two and a half. This was stupid. Then you got the announcers. The damn announcers. And then Jim Ross. How many times are you going to say, God damn, JR? Huh? How many times are you going to try to be a little bit? Hey, he's got the goddamn plastic bag. They don't teach that wrestling skew. I mean, come on. Come on. It is high time for Jim Ross, and I'm a huge Jim Ross fan. I grew up watching him in the Attitude Era. But golly, it is just, he has not cut out to call this type of product. He's just not. You can tell he doesn't give a damn. You can tell he's just get, collecting a paycheck. Get him out of there. Why they re-signed him, I'll never know. He wasn't going to go back to WWE, even if he didn't. He would have just faded off into existence, into, into the ether, as it were. But from the commentary to the plastic bag to Danielson, no selling, no selling the bag. And then they carry him out of there. And Jim Ross, goddamn, goddamn. How many times are you going to say GD? I mean, really? Come on, man. Hey, the goddamn bag. Don't teach that shoe. Frick off already, JR. I'm sorry. Pull a Biden and realize that you should not be here anymore and that you're going to ride off into the sunset after this contract is, di is done. 
Anyway, the main event. The main event was a lights out cage match. Whatever the hell that means. All I know what it means. They turned the lights out. It's non-sanctioned. Who cares? I was digging this up until the center block came out. And then I was just like, oh, come on. If, yeah, it's not a fake center block, but when he power bombed him onto it, Perry onto it, or when, you know, I, I or when they sort of got power bomb is so non memorable. This is so not memorable. I don't care. And then we got, you know, tables and the crowd at one point is chanting, you sick F at somebody. And then the next point they're chanting, we want fire. The AEW crowds, you're stupid. You're just plain stupid. I regret ever, I mean, the only reason why I ever went to Revolution was because it was Sting's last match. And part of me regrets it because he returns at Wembley three or four months later. So what the hell did we really see? Nothing. Well, they said Sting may still pop up. No, he shouldn't be. That's my point. So then you got, you know, then they he takes... The state, they, they got the staple gun, and the, uh, that really kind of, this whole thing, you know what, I'm changing my mind. This whole thing was a shit show. This whole match was just a giant, gross, grotesque shit show. And the last half of this pay-per-view just escalated into one turd after another in the shit show. Do we really need staple guns? Do we really need, oh, it's burnt wood from his house. <gasps> Which they did a good job selling. Don't get me wrong. Posting a video of, hey, I bought my childhood home. And then later on going, uh, Paige burnt it down. That was decent. And something really never been done before in wrestling. I actually liked it. But this was just a shit show. The whole thing was just the, land, the cherry on top of the shit show Sunday. And you got staples and wood and just... It's... Then you got people stabbing each other with hypodermic needles. It's through the cheek. I thought this shit died with Abdullah the Butcher 30 years ago. 40 years ago even. Nope, we're going to bring it back. We're going to, because we're, you know. And then we got chair shots to the head. And it's okay because they cut to a wide shot. You didn't see it. No, it's okay. no, it's not okay. In this day and age, it's still not okay. This whole thing was stupid. It's, it's, it's recklessness. It's carelessness. There's no real thought put into it. There was really no real big story told. The commentators, Jim Ross is so disgusted by this that by the end of it, he's just spouting out nonsense because it's past his bedtime. And the other thing, Shivani's so used to the bullcrap by now, you can tell he's just there to collect a damn paycheck so that he doesn't have to go back to working at Starbucks and call, calling Gwinnett Braves baseball, okay? He doesn't want to go back to calling minor league ball, and Tony Khan's paying him a hell of a lot of money to sit there and put up with this nonsense, because that's what it is, nonsense. And anybody who says they like that match is kidding themselves. The crowd themselves, once he took his, oh, we're going to take the grill. It's the grill out of it. He gold teeth out of it. Why are you wrestling with that shit in your mouth anyway? Why are you wrestling with, that, with a grill in your mouth anyway? And then, you know, they did the table spot. And they said, you know, the, the crowd's chanting, we want fire. I'm sitting here going, no, they're not going to do the fire because none of them has that flame retardant gel spread all over their back like they did with Cody Rhodes. So I knew that we were not going to get fire. And then we get hypodermic needles shoved through people's cheeks. This was, and it, that, that turned the crowd off. The crowd was disgusted. There's a such thing as good heat, bad heat, and then there's disgusting heat. They got disgusting heat tonight. The crowd didn't want to see it. And by the end of this match, the crowd was just like, oh. 
It wasn't like, oh, it was, oh, there's a big difference there. If I have to give this damn pay-per-view a letter grade, it's a damn D+. Plus. The last two matches, the finishes of the last two matches, or should I say, the closing angle from the from the main from the title match along with the entire main event brought it down from a C to a D minus to me. I'm so glad I didn't pay for this. Somebody sent it to me. I'm so glad I didn't pay for this. That's all I gotta say. He didn't get my money for all in. He's not getting my money for all out. He ain't getting my money for freaking Wessel Dream or whatever they want to call it. Wet dream, Tony Khan. This entire thing's a wet dream for him. When will people see that? that this is stupid. It's a glorified indie has come to life. He tries to act like he's CZW. Why would you even approve that, Tony? Why would you even want to approve that? Oh, I'm not going to be a bad guy and tell the guys no. They should go out there and entertain and be able to do what they want. <laughs> no. You're a boss. It's time you start acting like it. <sighs> and then somebody goes, somebody sits there and I post a video of the AEW crowd from Wednesday. And people are like, oh, times are hard. People can't afford the high price tickets. But yet WWE selling out just about everywhere they go for TV. Oh, it's apples and oranges. That's their next. That's the next argument. It's apples and oranges because it's two different products. <laughs> what happened to the AEW fans going wrestling should be for everybody? Well, if wrestling should be for everybody, they should be drawing the same amount of fans WWE does. The same people. If it's for everybody, everybody should want to go to every single event. But guess what? They don't. The arenas aren't even a quarter full anymore. They're about an eighth full. And anybody who sits there and goes, it's apples and oranges. <laughs> no, it's wrestling. It's pro wrestling. And that style of pro wrestling is not drawing. Yes, they sold out last night at All In. But that's because it's a pay-per-view and it's Chicago. And I got a feeling after this, a lot of them won't be coming back. Because I've talked to a lot of people from last night who were disgusted, absolutely disgusted at what went down in those last two matches, especially. It's horrible. And anybody who likes this stuff, you you know, hardcore wise, you need your fucking head examined. I am so outraged. I'm so glad by this. But on the other hand, I'm so happy and so glad that I did not put up my hard-earned money for this. It's sickening and stupid and unwarranted. Why do we need hypodermic needles shoved through people's cheeks, through people's faces? Why? Oh, it's entertainment. No, that's stupid. One false molecule, one false little germ gets on that needle and you've given somebody freaking, you know, a disease or, or an illness. Needles aren't nothing to play with. There's kids going to be watching this shit that are going to grab their damn parents' needles and fucking go out in the yard and play backyard wrestling. There's kids in that audience that had to view that shit. Ooh, wrestling ain't all for kids. No, it's not. But don't bring kids to that kind of crap. And if I did bring my, if I were to bring my kid there and that something like that happened, I'd be utterly disgusted. Anyway, folks, that's my review of All Out 2024. And it's just stupid. This whole pay per view, in a nutshell. Again, if I had to give it a grade D minus, must try harder. You're not even trying at all anymore when you do stupid stuff like that. Anyway, folks, we'll see you down the road.